Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode. Welcome to another episode. Welcome to another episode of Gamecock Talk with Captain Will. I'm your man, Captain Will. Make sure you like, make sure you share, make sure you subscribe to Gamecock Talk with Captain Will so I can continue to bring you that gospel of Gamecocks every single day. Every single day, y'all. Every single day on a Saturday, Saturday afternoon, recording this. We, we, we prepping. We prepping. We are ready. We are ready to go down with Oregon State tomorrow. Tomorrow afternoon in Albany, New York, Oregon State is the team is that is be, between us and the Final Four. They stand in the way between the South Carolina Gamecocks going back to the Final Four to to uh, claim what's ours, to claim what's ours, to prove to the world that we have been, are, and will continue to be the number one team in college basketball. That is what is going down tomorrow, Oregon State. Huge game, huge game for the Gamecocks, huge game for Oregon State. And this game, this game by against Oregon State is going to be a really good game. This is going to be a really good game. Oregon State is a really good basketball team. This is no slouch. This is no pushover. This is not a, 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 a easy task beating Oregon State. We got to play ball. We have to play ball against Oregon State because Oregon State is uh, ranked 17th in net rating. Their strength of schedule is ninth in the country. They played and beat very talented teams this season. They beat Arizona by three and two overtimes. They beat Colorado by six. They beat Utah by 25. They beat Utah again by 14. They beat Colorado again by six points. They beat UCLA by two. They beat Washington State by 14. They beat Colorado again by six points in double overtime. They beat Nebraska by 10, and they just beat uh, uh, Notre Dame by five points. Those are quality basketball teams that they have defeated. And a few of those teams, like Colorado, they beat three times. This is a very good basketball team. Very good basketball team. Now, they've lost to some teams as well. You know, they've what, lost, I think, seven times. They've lost to Southern Cal by two. They've lost to UCLA by 11. They've lost to Stanford by nine. They've lost to Southern Cal again by eight. They lost by, to, to Stanford by four. And then finally, they lost to Stanford again by nine. So they beat some quality teams and they've lost to some quality teams. Now, am I saying that South Carolina is the best team that they've ever played? I am saying that South Carolina is the best team they ever played. South Carolina is the best team, best overall team that the uh, Oregon State women's basketball team has ever played. Has ever played. They've been playing above their head all season. They was ranked 10th in their conference, in the preseason rankings. I don't believe a whole lot of that mess anyway. Preseason rankings, because you ain't seen nobody play. It's just something to get clicks, get uh, clickbait and, and, and get views and all this just down in third. But Oregon State is in the Elite Eight, which means there are eight teams remaining that can win the championship, and Oregon State is one of them. Now, being that South Carolina is the best team overall that they played this season. It's going to be a, a tough task for Oregon State as well. They got to play ball. And, and a few things to notice about this Oregon State team, obviously, is Reagan Beers. They're big. But they are a good offense. They are a good offense. And when you have an offensive rating of 35, 35th in the country, that means you're good. That means you're really good. Field goal percentage for Oregon State is 15th in the country. 15th in the country. Field goal percentage is 47th percent. Two-point percentage. Two-point percentage is 15th in the country at 53%. Three-point percentage. Three-point percentage for Oregon State is 25th in the country at 
six percent. They hit 30, 36 percent of day threes. That's a key metric to remember. Keep it in your brain. Keep it in your brain. Assists per basketball game. They're nineteenth in the country. All these stats I'm talking about, all these different metrics, all these different advanced analytic type ish that I'm talking about right now means that Oregon State is a really good offensive basketball team. They are a really good basketball team and played a top level schedule. So it ain't no, they didn't build these offensive ratings off playing Midlands Tech. They didn't build these offensive ratings by playing a job core school. No. They play real basketball teams. They play real basketball teams, and they are a real offense. Fewest turnovers a game. They don't turn the ball over a lot, even though they gave up the ball with 26, 27 times yesterday against Notre Dame. That was a a, 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 a blip in the matrix. That was that was something in the multi multiverse. I don't know what that was, and they still won the basketball game. I, I've never seen anything like that and won't see it again probably. I've never seen no mess like that. Never. But they average normally 14 turnovers a basketball game. Will I pressure make them turn the ball over like Notre Dame did? Our defense is better than Notre Dame. We'll see. Their assistant turnover rating is outstanding as well. You're talking about 19th in the country. 19th in the country with assistant turnover rating of a, a 1.29 to 1. Okay? 19th in the country. Now, with how great, with how great, this uh, offense is, they play real deliberate. They play real deliberate basketball. They don't play as quick as quick of a pace as we do. They're, they, they pace is about 274th in the country. They're going to walk the ball up. They're going to slow the game down. By comparison, states, Carolina's pace is 34th in the country. Oregon State going to slow this thing down. They're going to limit possessions. They're going to try to limit possessions. I'm going to try. Remember I told you about how good they are shooting the basketball in terms of threes? Well, their three-point attempt rate is 38th in the country. 38th in the country. 38% of their shots are three-point attempts. 38% of their shots. Which tells me which tells me we have to run them off the line because they're going to shoot them up. They're going to shoot them up, and they can shoot them. Are they as good a shooting basketball team that we just played against Indiana? They are not, but they are really good. They are really good, and they're going to shoot a bunch of them. Just You're going to see Oregon State shoot about 25, 30 threes, maybe more in this basketball game tomorrow. A key metric to watch is how many of those threes are shot and how many offensive rebounds they get. Now, we've just played a team like Indiana, who I said before was not a good offensive rebounding team. Well, they got 10 offensive rebounds yesterday. They got more offensive rebounds than the Gamecocks did yesterday. They got 10, we had nine. We only had two more rebounds than Indiana did, who's not a good rebounding team. Rebounding to me is always effort. Always effort. Always putting your body in the line and just like, yeah, I'm going to get this basketball. If there's a situation that Oregon State gets more rebounds than South Carolina or, or gets uh, uh, more offensive rebounds than Carolina tomorrow, that's a problem. That's a problem. Because if you're shooting this many three-pointers, shooting this many three-pointers that Oregon State's going to do, and they're also getting extra shots to shoot more three-pointers, some of them things going to go in. Some of them things going to go in. We have to rebound the basketball. We have to. That is the number one goal for Captain Will tomorrow that we rebound the basketball, that we dominate the boards. Tomorrow, that's going to set the tone. Rebounding the basketball. Their assists, their assist percentage is 19th in the country. 66% of their baskets are, are, are 
are an assist. 60 cent, 66 percent of them. They are inefficient. They're gonna run off screens. They're gonna move. They're gonna do all these things. They're gonna try try to draw bigs out the plank. They're gonna try to draw Camilla Cardoza and 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 Ashley Watkins and Sanaya Fagan and Chloe Kitts out of the paint so they can do all this moving, do all this uh, and get an easy basket. That's what they do. We have to disrupt that. We have to disrupt that mess. We got to disrupt the movement. They got to make them feel it. We got to make them feel it when they come across those screens. Got to make them feel it. Steals, they don't get many steals in the basketball game. Usually, they die. You know, 7%, only 7% of possessions they get a steal. They, they rank 352nd in terms of steal percentage. That's that's pretty, pretty bad. But they're going to slow the ball down. They're going to be very deliberate in their offense, and they're very effective in their offense. Now, offensively speaking, offensively speaking for, for, for uh, uh, Oregon State, of how good they are, 35th in the country, they, uh, I said this before when we played against Indiana, I was like, okay, you're playing against the number one defensive team in, in South Carolina, and we're going to see how good their number three, I think it was ranked number three offensively, and the first half, particularly the first quarter, Gamecock shut them down. Shut them down. Shut them down. Now, over the course of the game, Indiana found a rhythm. South Carolina lost their rhythm. And the game was what it was. We need to play four quarters of defense tomorrow. We need to play that same defense that we played against North Carolina where we took their heart tomorrow. I guess it's a very good offense. Because if it's not four quarters, it got to be three quarters. We got to put it on them tomorrow from the tip off in terms of defense. T -t tomorrow is the day that we prove that we are the number one defense in the country. Tomorrow is the day. We've been the number one defense all country, all, all season long. All season long, we've been the number one defense. Tomorrow, we got to step on that and, and just do it. We got to put it, put it on tomorrow. We have to put it on tomorrow. So their offensive rating the 35th, playing the number one team in defense, number one defensive rating. Their field goal percentage is outstanding at 15th, where Carolina still has the number one ranked defense in terms of field goal percentage allowed. Two-point percentage, 15th, uh, again, for, for, for Oregon State. Carolina's number one in limiting two-point percentage. That's Camila Cardoza. That is uh, uh, Ashley Watkins. That is that effect that we have in the post. Because Reagan Beers scores about 67% from the field. There's a lot of easy baskets. We got to make it make, make uh, uh, Reagan Beers feel the way the McKenzie Holmes felt yesterday. Uncomfortable. Uncomfortable the whole game. We got to do the same thing. Now, Reagan Beers... Is a little shorter. She's about six two. I was, I was surprised when like she's six two. She's like six two, maybe six three. Like okay, she's gonna have her work cut out for her trying to defend Camila Cardoza. I mean, just I'm you just gonna have a tough time. I have a tough time. But back to their offense and our defense comparisons. We have to work them. We are. Not a team. Our team feeds off our defense. Easy transition buckets. Gets the energy. All those things. We got to do that tomorrow. Our defense have to lead the way tomorrow. And the offense will follow. We have to do that. Otherwise, if we don't. If our defense don't play. If our defense plays average. We're going to lose this basketball game. If our defense plays average tomorrow, we will lose this basketball game. Our defense got to play above average to great tomorrow in order for us to win the basketball game. It has, we have to be connected. We cannot allow easy baskets for Oregon State. We can't. Now, with Oregon State, they're going to see more speed than they've ever seen on the basketball court with South Carolina. They're going to see more length. And I know they play Stanford most, multiple times. Stanford got really good length. I know that they play UCLA. UCLA got good length. But they've never met a team that has the length and the speed and athleticism that a South Carolina team has. 
we have to uh, uh, impose our will against Oregon State. And then we can say we're in the Final Four. But we got to play 40 minutes of basketball because Oregon State's defense is good as well. They, they, Oregon State is, a, is very comparable to a South Carolina basketball team. They're very comparable. They are. Their defensive rating is 55th, which is really good. And real talk, the only reason their defensive rating is 55th and not much higher is because they're steals. They don't steal the basketball. They're 354th in terms of steals. They don't steal the basketball. They only average about five steals per basketball game. They're three, 354th in terms of steals. Carolina is, uh, what, 35th? No, Carolina, no, I'm, I'm wrong. 71st, I believe. 71st in terms of steals. They block shots. They get several block shots. They're 29th in the country with block shots, averaging five a game. Even though uh, uh, Carolina's obviously number one, but they're going to block some shots tomorrow. They're going to get some shots. Uh, they're going to block some, uh, some, some uh, you know, with, it, with beers, and, and, and they're going to block some shots. Field goal percentage, six in the country. Six in the country in terms of field goal percentage. That is excellent. They give up 35%. Field goal percentage allowed on defense. That is sensational. Sensational. Two-point percentage at seventh. Seventh, two-point percentage, 39%. Three-point percentage allowed at 20th. Giving up a 28% from the three-point line. Their defense is awesome. They have a really good defense. They've shown that multiple occasions this season. They've shown that. Our offense, I just talked about our defense. Our offense got to be on point tomorrow because we are going against one of the better defenses, be, defensive teams in the country. We are. We are going one of the, against one of the best defenses in the country tomorrow. Our offense, which is you know, number three in terms of uh, offensive rating and number three in terms of field goal percentage allowed and 17th against two-point percentage and, and number one shooting the three. Yes, Carolina's back to number one shooting the, the three ball at 40%. Now, with that with that being said, Carolina don't shoot a, a, a ton of three-pointers. We're ranked 323rd in terms of three-point uh, attempts where 25% of our baskets are three-point attempts. But we are number one shooting 40% from the three. Well, Oregon State defends the three very well. They defend the two-point percentage very well. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a ball game tomorrow. We have a ball game tomorrow. And, and we have to play ball tomorrow. I ain't going to front. I'm not going to front. I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. I'm nervous about the game tomorrow. I am nervous about this basketball game tomorrow because, because the girls have to be locked in tomorrow or we're going to lose this basketball game. Oregon State presents a challenge that is different than other teams that had solid defenses. LSU got a really good defense. LSU's defense is a little bit better than Oregon State, okay? But what LSU don't do well, they, they have great individual talent, but what LSU don't do well is shoot the three ball. Now, Oregon State shoot the three ball well, and they play defense. They're not as athletic as a LSU but they shoot the ball and they're going to defend. Now, with our players on offense, they got to be on target tomorrow. They got to be locked in. We cannot give up easy, easy turnovers tomorrow. We cannot give up easy turnovers against this basketball team. Would they uh, beat us in transition because we give up easy turnovers? No, I don't anticipate that. But we can't just keep giving teams that shoot the three a lot more opportunities. We got to limit the turnovers. We got to rebound the basketball. We got to offense specifically. We got to you know, get these offensive rebounds on our end and get extra baskets. We have to be comfortable making them feel uncomfortable. 
That is really the key to this game. They're going to slow down the pace. We're going to pick up the pace. We got to speed everything up with them. Would this be a situation where, where, where we see more defensive pressure on this basketball team because they don't, because they, because they slow things down. So if you're going to slow things down, we're going to help you out by speeding the pace up and getting on you. Things like that will, will make them feel uncomfortable. If they if we're allowing them to walk the ball up and, and and things like that, I don't think I think I don't think it's good for us. I think Raven Johnson got to be in her bag tomorrow. I got I think that she got to really be the head of the snake tomorrow defensively. I think tomorrow's a game that Camila Cardoza has to ball out. I think we need to see the reemergence of Ashley Watkins in the post. We have to see this is a game that Breezy Hall needs to step up. This game right here, Breezy needs to step up and show Oregon State who she is. Bench play is going to be paramount in this basketball game. Malaysia Fullwiler, who balled out the first and the second round, needs to ball out tomorrow. We need to see that version of Malaysia Fullwiler, not the version that we saw last night or yesterday. Chloe got a ball out. Bench play is going to be a, a, a key component of winning this basketball game. We need to wear them down. We need to wear them down. Now, they go about eight, seven, seven to eight players, seven to eight players, Donovan Hunter, you know, six-foot guard. She played about 27 minutes a game, seven points, two rebounds, four assists per basketball game. She shoots 41% from the field, 32% from three. She's a solid basketball player. Offensive rating is 100.6, okay, 92.7, but defensive rating, not good. When she's in the game and she's playing about 27 minutes a game, whoever... She is guarding. Need to light her up. Light her up. Whoever, whoever's guard, whoever uh, Hunter is guarding, we need to, to put it on her. Put it on her. If it's Powell, if it's Breezy, we need to put it on her. If it's Raven, whoever. Full Wally. And then, then you got Talia. Talia Van Olahoffen. I hope I'm saying the name right. Five for 11 guard, 27 minutes a game, 12 points, four rebounds, five assists. Those are solid numbers. Offensive rating 106.5, defensive rating 87.3. She's okay defender. Shooting about 39% from the field, 33% from three. She's decent. She's decent. Am I, like, worried about a player like this who, who, who shoots 37 percent from the three, 33%? Hunter who shoots 32%? Not necessarily. I'm not really worried. But they're going to shoot them up. I just think, like, defensively, we got to put those two players, in, 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 in particular, in, in particular, on their heels. On their heels. Hunter for show. Hunter for show. Put her on their heels. And go at her. Now, all of, all of Hoffman is a better defender, but we have better guards. Let's, let's be clear. We have better guards on the South Carolina basketball team. Raven, Powell, Bree, Tessa, Full Wild. We just got better guards. We just got to show that tomorrow. Our guard depth. I really like Tamia Gardner. Six foot three forward, 12.7 rebounds, one assist for, you know, 45% from the field, about 40% from three. She's a nice player. She is a nice player. So this this player in, in Gardner, that that the, Ashley Watkins, I need for you to shut it down. I need for you to shut her down. You're one of the better defenders in the country. I need you to shut her down. She shoots 45% from the from the field and 40% from three. She's gonna try to pull you out of the paint. Shooting those threes. She's gonna do that. We know that. But I need you to shut it down. Be that defender that I know you are tomorrow. Stay out of foul trouble. Don't foul nobody on the three-point line. We need you in this basketball game. I want Ashley Watkins playing 27, 28 minutes a game in this game. That's what I want. So in order for her to do that, she got to stay out of foul trouble. I don't want Ashley Watkins playing at 16, 17 minutes a game. I don't want that tomorrow. 
I want her at 27, 28 minutes in this basketball game because if Ashlyn Watkins is playing that many minutes, that means she's balling. That means that she is being a defensive presence on the court, and it also means she's standing out of foul trouble. Uh, if you want to, you got a lot of people here who don't really believe in analytics like the way I do. Sorry for your loss, but you just want to look at the box score. Just look at this right here. If Ashton Watkins is playing a, a lot of minutes in this basketball game against a, a very good opponent, that means that Watkins had a good game. That's what it means. That's what it means. Re, uh, Reagan Beers, we we've talked a lot about how good she is. Six foot two forward. What's crazy about it, you know, Reagan Beer, Beers is a big. She's a big, right? She's the same height as Chloe. She's the same height as Chloe, shorter than Watkins, shorter than Fagan, much shorter than than Camila, shorter than Kami, uh, Sakiba. Just you know, just about an inch taller than a uh, Tessa. But she's uh, she's a big and she's dominant. She's dominant. She gets easy looks at the basket. Easy looks at the basket. She seals the post and scores almost at will when she's comfortable. Camila Cardoza. Camila Cardoza, I need you to be that SEC defensive player of the year. I need you to be that you know, first team all defensive type player that I know you are. You are five inches taller. You have longer arms. You are more athletic. She's strong. You're stronger. Reagan Beers is their best player. She's their best player. 28 minutes, 18 points, 10 rebounds, 2 assists, 67% from the field. She is their best player. Offense rating of 120.9. I think it was second or third team All-American. Y'all know how I feel about those lists. Defensively, she's 79.0. She's a good defensive player. Camilla outplayed McKenzie Holmes yesterday. Camilla needs to outplay Reagan Beers tomorrow. I want aggressive Camilla Cardoza. I want them to force feed her the ball. I want her to eat tomorrow. I want Reagan Beers to be on the buffet line at Golden Corral. And I want Camila Cardoza to let her know who is the best center in the country. I want to let her know. I want to let her know. And I don't have any doubt that she's going to do that. Because you can seal players that you are bigger than. She had, she had, I mean, she had a great game uh, against Notre Dame. She was bigger. She was stronger. She, a couple of players that were a little taller, but she was strong. She was bodying them. She's not going to body a bully Camila Cardoza. She's not going to body a bully a player like Ashley Watkins. We got to make those entry passes, those easy entry passes that Reagan Beers have difficult. And I think our length of a Breezy Hall, of a, of a Tessa Johnson, players of that edge, of that, of that, that length, of Chloe Kitts, just make it difficult. For her to get those entry passes. Kelsey Rees, six foot five, four, plays about 20 minutes a game, five points, four rebounds, 46% from the field, 38% from the three. She's gonna get a little run tomorrow. She's gonna get some burn tomorrow. I, I don't, I don't, I somebody correct me if I'm wrong. I don't remember Kelsey Rees playing yesterday. I don't, I don't, I don't know if she got some burn yesterday. But a part of me think that because of the size of a Camilla Cardoza at six foot seven, you're gonna get see. You know, Reeves gets some burn tomorrow at six foot five. Now, I'm not gonna say it's gonna be great because Reeves, even though she's tall, doesn't mean that she's a, a really good player like that. You know, just 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 tall. But I, I foresee her getting some burn tomorrow to help out in the post. A couple more players, AJ Marotti, I mean, six foot one guard. 21 minutes, five points, two rebounds, 37% from the field, 31% from three. They have talent on this basketball team. They play connected. They are really smart. They are efficient. Carolina got to make them feel uncomfortable. 
we make them feel uncomfortable. We are on that plane to Cleveland. We have to take control of this basketball game, stay locked in for four quarters in this basketball game. Because we know they didn't yesterday. It was locked in for about a half. And then Indiana came back on that big run and made the game close. We can't do that. We can't look past. And I think a part of the team yesterday looked past after we was beating them down. It was like, okay, we, we got this, blah, 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 all those things. Let's get ready for Cleveland. What I'm going to wear, what I'm going what I'm, to get my hair did, I'm going to get my nails done, all these different things. I already prepping for Cleveland. I already prepping for the TikTok dance, all these different things. We can't do that tomorrow. We are a better basketball team than Oregon State. We are a more talented basketball team than Oregon State. Oregon State has a little bit more experience than Carolina but we are better. We just have to play like we are the better team. Prediction? Prediction for this basketball game? I think it's going to be close. I think it's going to be close. I think it's going to be a game that we win by uh, um, eight points or less. I don't see a blowout in this basketball game. I don't see a blowout in this basketball. Only way I see a blowout in this game is if um, Reagan Beers gets in foul trouble. We make them feel uncomfortable. If we cause a bunch of turnovers like we did, like they did against uh, uh, Notre Dame did yesterday, we're going to blow them out because we are not Notre Dame. Let's get that. If they commit 20 turnovers against South Carolina, the game is a blowout. So that's something to watch. You know, Notre Dame made them feel a little comfortable. I'm going to rewatch that game. I'm going to rewatch that game today. Have to. But make them feel uncomfortable. And 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 play solid defense for four quarters. Solid defense for four quarters. We win this basketball game. We win this basketball game, and we are set for the road trip to Cleveland. Let's close it out, girls. Let's close this thing out. This concludes another episode of Gamecocks Talk with Captain Will. I'm your man, Captain Will. Make sure you like. Make sure you share. Make sure you subscribe to Gamecocks Talk with Captain Will. Follow me on. Obviously, on Twitter at Gamecocks Talk. Follow me on Instagram at Gamecocks Talk with Captain Will. You know, subscribe on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and especially on YouTube because you are now rocking with the best. And since you're rocking with the best, come rock with your man, Captain Will. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go.